up, knitters? This is Jana. So, next week is Thanksgiving. Can you even believe that? So that kind of kicks off the holiday season once again. I cannot believe 2018 has just flown by. It's just crazy how fast it's gone. And isn't that the case? The older we get, the faster time seems to move. I mean, that's nonsense, right? Because time is time. But doesn't it seem that way? So we only have a certain number of knitting hours left until Christmas. So that brings up uh, what I want to talk about today, which is should you be knitting gifts for other people? Should you be knitting gifts? Now I'm not I'm not being scroogey, I'm not trying to be grinchy. So but but the question comes up frequently whether people are net worthy. Okay, so what do I mean by net worthy? Um consider, you know, if you knit a pair of socks and you cast on 72 stitches and you think about how many thousands of stitches that is, and it might take you 40 hours to knit a pair of socks, right? I mean, obviously there's lots of variables there, but you get what I'm saying. So is the person that you're knitting socks for, are they one of those people where they're like, why don't you just buy your socks in a 10 pack at Walmart? Or, or do they truly appreciate that you hand made that pair of socks with them in mind because you love them and because you did that out of, out of, you know, care for them and you want them to have warm feet this winter and all of those things. In addition to the fact that you enjoy the process of knitting those socks, is that person going to appreciate the effort that you put in? Now, I don't mean they need to gush all over social media about it and they don't need to go on and on and be internally indebted. Um, you know, that's not what I'm, that's not what I mean. We don't need to be over the top about it. But what I'm saying is, you know, there's a difference between people that, that don't understand why you hand knit things and they buy their socks in a 10 pack at Walmart. There's a difference between those people and the people that are truly knit worthy. Like they, they're going to care for those socks. They're not going to put them in the dryer on high, <laughs> right? They'll at least, you know, dry them on the drying rack or lay them over the back of a chair or whatever, because they're, so they're going to treat them with respect. I guess that's the point. And they're going to appreciate the fact that you thought you thought enough of them to go to all this effort, you know, to, to make something handmade for them. Um, I've made the mistake, well, I guess I'm slow on the uptake because I've done it many times, made the mistake of hand knitting something for someone who wasn't knit worthy. And I don't say that to be grinchy or to be mean, um, but here, I'll give you an example. Okay, so... There was a person that I worked with probably 10 years ago at the time, at the time that this happened. And I saw on social media, you know, we hadn't really been in touch for a long time, um, but I saw on social media that she had leukemia and she was going through all these health problems. And I mean, that really kind of tugged at my heartstrings and I wanted to do something for her. So I knitted her this, this comfort shawl. And I thought, you know, she's going to be spending a lot of time in the hospital and a lot of, you know, time hooked up to like chemotherapy and however, all of her treatments. And I thought well, it would be a nice thing for her to just have on her shoulders for, you know, sitting there in the hospital and reading magazines or whatever. I, maybe I didn't know her as well as I thought I did. Um, maybe I didn't pick the right color. Maybe I didn't pick the right pattern. I don't know. Um, but anyway, it, so I knitted this, this thing and I sent it to her and I never heard a word about it. And then I thought, well, maybe it got lost in the mail. So I did the tracking number. No, she got it. It was delivered. Um, and, you know, I, I wasn't expecting her, again, I'm not expecting her to gush all over social media about it and go on and on, but a simple acknowledgement that I had made this for her and I was concerned about her as a friend, a simple, you know, a thank you would have been great. So I have to chalk that up as experience. You know, I learned a lot with that project. I learned a lot. There were some techniques involved in making that shawl that I had never attempted before. So that that's great. I mean, I learned a lot. So you have to figure out, well, am I doing this for the sake of the process because it's a learning experience for me and because I'm going to gain a lot personally by doing this project regardless of who I give it to? Or are you doing it for that person because they're going to love it and because they're going to use it and they're going to appreciate it and they're going to think that that it was awesome that you thought enough of them to make that for them. So I think what a lot of people don't necessarily understand is when you knit something for somebody, you're thinking about that person while you're making it. I mean, I know you're watching Netflix or whatever you're, you know, you're going about doing other things in the talking with your family or whatever while you're doing that. But you've selected the yarn with that person in mind. You selected the project with that person in mind and 
you know, you're, you're putting a lot of yourself and your effort and your, and your love into it. So that's kind of a, a big deal. So you need to decide, is that person knit worthy, right? Like my children, my kids are knit worthy, obviously, because they understand the work involved and they love it when I make things for them, as does my husband. They appreciate it because they know what's involved. Um, so yeah, probably your immediate family is knit worthy or you already know that they're not. <laughs> Because they're like, oh, that's your thing. I don't really care. And that's fine. That's totally fine. But before you go casting on a hat pattern for somebody that works down the hall in cubicle B that you don't really know, you know, you might want to rethink that. Or maybe you do want to knit for that person, not because you think they're really going to respect your knitting endeavors, but because that's something you want to do because you enjoy doing it. And you're doing it for the sake of the process. And that's totally fine. That's totally fine too. But before you get disappointed, I encourage you to think about all of these factors before you decide that you're going to knit a whole Rubbermaid tub full of Christmas gifts for everybody on your list. Okay. Maybe that's worth it. Maybe it's not. You know, you don't want to get like lose a bunch of sleep and go through several bottles of wine knitting a shawl that's at 1200 yards for somebody that truly really doesn't care. Right? Maybe they just want a Hickory Farms sausage basket instead. <laughs> and that's okay. That's okay. Knit that shawl for yourself. All right. So now let's talk about Christmas knitting. Okay, so that's a good segue. All right. So if you are, if you have determined that people on your list are knit worthy and you need some projects that you can do fairly quickly, like within a day or two or three or maybe, you know, four or five evenings of quality knitting time, I'm going to put a list for you down below in the video description where you can, you know, you can do some of these things that they knit up relatively quickly and they're fun and they're fun to knit and they're not super complicated. So one is a hurricane beanie. It's a pretty simple hat. Um, it's especially fun with uh, maybe some interesting hand spun or worsted weight that's, you know, got some hand paint colors or it's an interesting pattern. Um, so that's one. Um, there's some ornaments that are really fun. I'm going to do some uh, Christmas gnomes for people this year. So to put, that's a nice thing to put in um, a care package. You know, if you're doing some Christmas baking and you're going to include, you know, the Christmas breads and the stuff like that, you might throw a gnome in there too. So maybe some ornaments. I'll put some links down below again. Um, I have done a bandana cowl. It's a, it's a cowl that you just pull on over your head. So it's, but instead of being the traditional cylinder, it's a bandana shape. So it comes down to a point. So that's particularly helpful if you, if you're commuting, if you know people that are walking to work or, you know, it just covers a little bit lower, um, that gap area in a, in a coat or a sweatshirt or a hoodie or whatever. So the bandana cowl, the hurricane hat, the ornaments, um, obviously there's always scarves, you know, there's some, uh, fingerless mitts are, are pretty quick, you know, they don't have to be super long, but even from like here up, fingerless mitts are great. Or we just finished a knit along with the world's simplest knitting pattern for mittens, the world's simplest mittens. That's what they're called. So I'll put those links down below. Um, Oh, felted clogs. If you're an, if you're a relatively accomplished knitter and you're okay with decreases and wraps and turns and a pattern that's a little bit more on the spicy adventurous side, then felted clogs. They take a couple of days to knit fantastic slippers for people and they last a good long time because they're double sold. All right. So I'll put those links. I keep saying that I'll put the links down below. <laughs> All right. So those are some really good, um, relatively quick knit projects for people for that you could probably bust out between now and the 20th. All right. So if you have other suggestions or you want to share what you're doing, leave me a comment down below and let me know if you think people in your life are knit worthy and what you're going to be making for them. Okay. As always, I really appreciate you subscribers. We just hit 5,000 subscribers in the group and I'm so thankful. That's just fantastic. I appreciate your support. All right, knit on, my friends. Enjoy your weekend.